Hi, this is Liam, Cloud Solution Architect for Microsoft. This week, I got an opportunity to start using Azure Virtual WAN, and I was honestly genuinely quite impressed by it, so I thought I'd record a video to share what I've learned and hopefully make it more clear as to what it is, why you would want to use it, and why you might even might, why you might not want to use it. So, without further ado, I'll, I'll do a quick explanation as to what it is, and then I'll move on to a, a demo of a virtual WAN that I created, and I think that will paint a clear picture as to what it, uh, what this technology can do for an, for an organization. So, what virtual WAN is, is behind the scenes, it's a collection of our existing technologies that's presented in a very... Uh, packaged way to offer a global wide area network to our organization. All right, global wide area network, what's that? It's a way of connecting your organization together. Previously, you might have used technologies like MPLS or SD1. Um, this is a, a form of SD1, but it's got some Azure secret, secret sauce sprinkled on top. Um, so, what does it do? It, in, in plain English, what it does is it connects your branch offices your headquarters, your larger offices, your remote users, your Azure virtual networks, all together through Azure, using Azure as your global transit network. So you get the second largest network in the world, which is the Microsoft network, as a way of uh, transiting your traffic both through Azure, so Azure to Azure, but then also branch office to branch office, remote users to branch office, HQ to remote users, it, and also out to the internet. It is really any-to-any -any communication, and that's what you get by default. Uh, you can obviously lock it down in certain ways, so you may not want your remote users to, I don't know, access a, a particular branch office. You can control all of that using Azure Firewall. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can actually see we've got this concept of something called a virtual WAN hub uh, in an Azure region. So if, if we take, let's say, West Europe as an Azure region, you can deploy a virtual WAN hub into that region. You can also deploy another hub, let's say East US, and connect them together using a hub-to-hub -hub connection. Geographically, you want to connect to the, the regional hub that's closest to you. So if you've got a branch office in New York, you'll connect that to the East US virtual WAN hub. Hopefully that makes sense. Same thing, remote users. We can have point-to-site connections to a, a local hub. Once they're connected in over point to site, by default they can access everything. Uh, you know, which is which is fantastic. This is what customers have really been asking for. Um, this dem demonstrates. It's a bit of a busy diagram, but it demonstrates the any to any connectivity. So that's the theory. Let's get into the reality. So what I did the other day while whilst I was exploring this technology is I created a resource group and I first of all I deployed Virtual One as a resource. So if I go into virtual one, this thing, it deploys in seconds. Um, by default, out of the box, it doesn't deploy anything else. It just deploys virtual one without any hubs, without any site-to-site -site connections, any of that. So I deployed it. And as you can see, you get presented here with a map. There's three dots here because I've deployed three regional hubs. So I've got one in West Europe, one in East US, one in East Asia. This is quite reflective of some global uh, customers we'd have. We'd imagine that they would have a number of regional hubs as they operate around the world. So again, if we go back to the previous video, uh, video, I want to say diagram, you can see here that you make connections into the hub. So let's have a look how that actually works. So as we can see on the left hand side, we've got connectivity. We've got hubs, which are these things here. We've got VPN sites. So these are our on-premise locations. So these could be our branch offices. They could be our headquarters. We've got user VPN configurations, which is your point to site network. We've got express route circuits and virtual network connections. So virtual network connections is actually how you connect an Azure virtual network to a regional hub. So if you've used VNet peering before, this is quite similar, um, but you have to do it from within this user interface and not through the peering interface. So if we expand, let's say West Europe, we can see here already there's three virtual networks connected to it. So we can see we've got an application spoke one virtual network, application spoke two, and a shared services virtual network. To make a connection, you just go here, you give it a name, 
you, t you pick which hub you want to connect it to and then you can select the virtual network that which you want to connect it only takes a couple of seconds really to connect it so now that they're connected to the virtual hub basically these three virtual networks can talk to each other we've got hub to hub connectivity so east us hub can talk to west us hub so effectively these three vnets can talk to these three vnets and these two vnets can talk to these six vnets so all of these vnets by default can talk to each other so now we've really got a global network um across azure but this all lives on azure what about the people who live in branch offices this is something i wasn't able to set up because i don't have a branch office <laughs> but effectively you can create a site which represents one, one of your branch offices that creates a vpn configuration which you would load onto your vpn device uh, if you've got things like Cisco or Silver Peak, those are actually supported out of the box. I think we've got some partners down here. Uh, maybe not. But yes, there are a number of partners who support Virtual One and give you a really nice out of the box experience. But effect, as long as it uh, supports things like IK, IKE V2, um, uh, VPN connectivity, even the ones who are not currently partners, you'll still be able to connect it, but you'll have to do a bit more configuration. So um, same thing, if you've got a, like a, let's say a headquarters or a data center where you may have express route connectivity, you can connect express route premium circuits into one of your regional hubs, thereby connecting it up to your virtual one. So it makes, let's if you think about it, it kind of creates like a big flat network where all of your company can talk to all of your company. Now, you can, you can disable you, you might think, okay, that's great, but I might not want particular branches to talk to other branches. You can disable branch to branch connectivity altogether, which may, basically means VPN sites cannot talk to other VPN sites. Mm -hmm. And we've also got uh, Azure Firewall in the mix here as well, which they're, they're actually called secure hubs now. So you can see we've got three firewalls and we've got the firewall manager in preview. What this does, it allows us to have a centralized control plane across our firewalls. The firewalls get deployed into the regional hubs, so I think that's represented quite well here. So we can see this is the, the regional hub, there's a firewall, and there's a firewall here. So for each of my three regional hubs, I've got three firewalls. Now I might globally want to whitelist or blacklist certain, uh, let's say, external websites from from firewalls. Previously, I would have had to manage that. So if I had 10 firewalls, I'd have to apply that rule to each firewall. Now we can do it uh, through the firewall manager, which makes things a lot simpler. So if we go into rules, I've actually set up by rule. So I've got some approved websites. So we've got GitHub, Azure, Microsoft, and Bing. Very Microsoft-centric, but there you go. Uh, so these are the four sites that are allowed. Um, they're applied to all three of my firewalls. Uh, so any uh, virtual machine that's routed through the firewall, uh, any VNet that's routed through the firewall will get these rules applied. So to actually test all of this, what I've done is I've deployed three virtual machines. Uh, let's have a look up at the top here. There we go. So I've got a virtual machine in the United States. I've got one in West Europe. And I've got one in, this one's actually in East Asia, as we can see over here. So if I try and connect to, let's say, the United States, I'm going to connect over RDP. Um, the way I'm able to connect, bear in mind that this is a private IP address. I'm not using just-in-time access. I'm not using Bastion. I'm using my point-to-site connection, which is connected directly into the Western Europe hub. So my path is I'm at home. I'm connecting into the West Europe hub. I'm using hub to hub connectivity to get to the East US hub, and that's paired with a virtual network where this VNet is. So like I said, it's kind of like a flat network. Once you can get into the virtual one, you'll be able to traverse your, your company's network, which is which is great. Um, so let's connect. So I'm just gonna put my password in. Uh, let's make sure you can. And hit remember me. So I was, that message was because I was already connected. So as you can see, I'm actually connected now into a virtual machine, which is in East US Azure region from my current location, which is near London in the United Kingdom. And let's try a different one. So let's try 
West Europe, which is a little bit closer. Same thing, RDP. Again, this won't work if I'm disconnected from a point to site connection. So if I disconnect here, then try to connect, it won't work, which is expected because I cannot talk to my virtual one because I'm not traversing a point to site connection. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to reconnect. Connection only takes a couple of seconds. As you can see here, these are all the routes that have been propagated down. So these routes are basically the address ranges of my Azure VNets. This is all done through BGP. I don't have to configure any static routes or anything like that, which is a big ask for some of our customers. So these routes get learned automatically as I add new VNets. Um, these routes will get added in once I disconnect and reconnect. So let's try and connect again. Let's try and type the password in properly. There we go. And again, I was already connected, which is why we saw that message. But here we go. Now, <laughs> I deployed this into Western Europe, which is actually in Amsterdam. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I probably should have put a European Union flag here, but there you go. So just to review what we, what we just saw. So um, if this user represents me, I'm in London. I used a point to site VPN to connect into my local hub my local hub in this instance was in west europe first i connected to a west us vm so i started off here connected over point to site went over the hub to hub connection to my east us hub and then over appearing to a virtual network that contained the vm i i was able to connect the second one i connected the same way in that i went over the point to site vpn but this time i went into a vnet that contained my West Europe VM, which is one of the locally connected hubs. So thereby I demonstrated how we can show hub to hub connectivity to virtual networks and also to uh, virtual networks that are connected to the regional hub. So it's worth noting that there are a couple of elements of this that are still in preview. So the hub to hub connectivity is still currently in preview. Also is the firewall manager, which I briefly demoed as well. So it's worth bearing that in mind uh, that, that, that a couple of the functionalities, uh, use cases we saw uses uh, preview functionality. But if you've got a single region that you wanted to leverage without using the firewall manager, you, you could do that today, which is globally av uh, generally available, let's say, um, with these other features coming coming out soon. So hopefully that made it clear. Um, Certainly, that was a day's worth of work to get to that point for me to understand all of this. But uh, yes, hopefully this condensed it down a little bit so you can understand uh, what this te not technology is and, you know, why customers might want to use it. Um, and yeah, if, if there are any questions on this, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'll, I'll try my best to help. Thanks.